Juan Bautista Alberti August 29, 1810 to June 19, 1884, was an Argentine political theorist and diplomat. Although he lived most of his life in exile in Montevideo, Uruguay and in Chile, he influenced the content of the Constitution of Argentina of 1853. Biography <inaudible> 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 Early life Juan Bautista Alberti was born in San Miguel de Tucumán, capital city of the Tucumán province, Argentina, on August 29, 1810. His father, Salvador Alberti, was a Spanish Basque merchant. His mother, Josefa Araos y Balderrama, had been born into an Argentine family of Spanish descent. She died as a result of Juan Bautista's birth. Salvador Alberti supported the Patriots during the Argentine War of Independence, and had interviews with General Manuel Belgrano during the Second Upper Peru Campaign that was fought in Tucumán and northern areas in 1812 and 1813. His father died as well in 1822, as he was still a minor his siblings Felipe and Transita became his legal guardians, he got a scholarship to the School of Moral Sciences in Buenos Aires, along fellow Tucumán Marco Avellaneda. He studied alongside Vicente Fidel López and Esteban Echeverria. He could not endure the harsh discipline of the school, and briefly left his studies pretexting being sick. He became interested in music, but preferred to learn it through autodidacticism rather than through formal artistic education. He wrote his first book in 1832, El Espíritu de la Música Spanish, The Spirit of Music. He got a job with Juan Maldes, a friend of his family, and continued the informal learning of his other studies. He resumed his formal studies in 1831, and moved to the University of Córdoba. He returned to his province for family business, and wrote Memoria Descriptiva Sobre Tucumán Spanish, Descriptive Report of Tucumán at the request of Governor Alejandro Heredia. He declined the governor's request to stay in Tucumán, and returned to Buenos Aires. <laughs> Civil War Once in Buenos Aires, Alberti became friends with Juan Maria Gutierrez and Esteban Echeverria. They established the Generation of 37, a group of liberal intellectuals that met at the Marcos Sastra Literary Hall. They criticized both factions of the Argentine civil wars, deeming the Federalists too violent and the Unitarians incapable to rule. They thought that both factions should end their disputes and work together. The governor Juan Manuel de Rosas forced Marcos Sastra to close the hall. Alberti established then a women's magazine, La Moda, Spanish, the fashion, writing with the pseudonym, Figurillo. Despite of the main focus, the magazine contained political content as well. Alberti was concerned about the legal system of Argentina as well, and wrote Fragmento Preliminar al Estudio del Derecho Spanish, preliminary fragment of the study of law to point problems and suggest solutions. The members of the Generation of 37 continued as a secret society, known as the May Association, in reference to the May Revolution, but the government discovered it. Most members emigrated to other countries. Alberti emigrated to Uruguay in 1838. In this city, he got a degree as lawyer. He had already finished his studies in Buenos Aires, but refused to make the oath under Rosa's government. Alberti thought that the real problem in Argentina was not specifically Rosas, but the society that supported him. As a result, he thought that the generation of 37 should understand the reasons of such popular support, and how to earn it for themselves. He worked in antirocist publications, such as El Grito Argentino, Spanish, The Argentine Cry, and Muera Rosas, Spanish, Death to Rosas. He also wrote theater plays, La Revolución de Mayo. Spanish, The May Revolution, and El Gigante Amapolas, Spanish, The Giant Poppies. The name of this last one was a word play with the last name of Roses, as Roses can be also understood in the Spanish language as the plural form of Rosa, the rose flower. Alberti worked as well as secretary of Juan Lavalle, who made a military campaign against Roses during the French blockade of the Rio de la Plata, but left him for political disagreements. 
Manuel Oribe, president of Uruguay deposed during the Uruguayan Civil War and allied to Roses, laid siege to Montevideo in 1840, so Alberti left the city and moved to Europe. Alongside Juan Maria Gutierrez, Alberti met Jose de San Martín in Paris. The Argentine general of the War of Independence was aged 66 at the time. Alberti praised his modesty and vitality. Alberti returned to the Americas in 1843. He tried to meet the former Argentine president Bernardino Rivadavia during his brief stay in Rio de Janeiro, to no avail. He settled in Valparaiso, Chile. He renewed his degree as lawyer, and worked both as a lawyer and journalist, again with the pseudonym, Figurillo. He studied the United States Constitution, seeking ideas that might work in Argentina, and wrote Sobre la Conveniencia de un Congreso General Americano Spanish, about the convenience of a General American Congress in 1844. He established the newspaper El Comercio, and wrote the report La República Argentina 37 años después de su Revolución de Mayo Spanish, the Argentine Republic 37 years after its May Revolution in 1847, calling for an end to the disputes between parties. Roses was finally defeated by Justo José de Urquiza in 1852, during the Battle of Caseros. Diplomacy With Roses deposed, Urquiza called the San Nicolas Agreement and convened a constituent assembly. Alberti supported the project and wrote Bases y Puntos de Partida para la Organización Política de la República Argentina Spanish, Bases and Starting Points for the Political Organization of the Argentine Republic, a draft for the new constitution. It was published by the printing house of the El Mercurio newspaper. It is heavily influenced by the United States Constitution. Alberti complemented this work with Elementos de Derecho Público Provincial Argentino Spanish, Elements of Argentine Provincial Civic Law, a comparison between the Argentine Constitution of 1826 and the United States Constitution. He attributed most of the problems of Argentina to its low population density, as the country had a very small population for its huge size. He frequently described the countryside as a desert. His proposed solution was to promote an influx of European immigration. His most known quotation is, Gobernar es poblar, Spanish, to govern is to populate. He proposed as well to improve the infrastructure in ports, roads and bridges, and introduce the recently invented telegraphy and rail transport in the country. He advocated as well for economic liberalism, rejecting the protectionism of Rosa's government. Urquiza, the new president of Argentina under the 1853 constitution, supported Alberti's work, and appointed him ambassador of the Argentine Confederation in Chile. By that time, Buenos Aires seceded from the Confederation as the state of Buenos Aires. The writer Domingo Faustino Sarmiento opposed Urquiza, and extended his criticism to Alberti. Sarmiento thought that Urquiza was just another caudillo similar to Roses, and Alberti thought that the state of Buenos Aires was keeping the policies of Roses regarding the relations between Buenos Aires and the other provinces and the national organization. Alberti's ideas on the issue were detailed in the Cartas Quilatanas, written from Quilota. Sarmiento wrote his answer in Los Ciento y Una. Urquiza proposed Alberti to be the Minister of Finances, he declined the offer. Urquiza gave him another appointment, move to Europe and seek recognition for the 1816 Argentine Declaration of Independence and its constitution, and prevent recognition for the state of Buenos Aires as a different country. Alberti visited the United States in his way to Europe, and had an interview with the American President Franklin Pierce. He visited London, meeting Queen Victoria, and finally settled in Paris. He would stay in this city for 24 years. Alberti met the French Emperor Napoleon III, who granted the French recognition to the Confederation. Alberti convinced him as well to remove the French diplomat at the state of Buenos Aires, and send another to the Confederation instead. Alberti began negotiations with the Marquis Pedro José Pidal for the Spanish recognition of the Argentine independence in 1857. He proposed two treaties between both countries, in the first, Spain would decline further sovereignty claims over the Argentine territory, and the second opened the country to commerce. He proposed as well that the Confederation would take the international debt of the former Viceroyalty of the Rio de la Plata, the predecessor state of Argentina under Spanish rule, excluding those belonging to Bolivia, Paraguay and Uruguay who had also been part of the Viceroyalty, but became different countries. 
The treaties were signed in 1857 and 1859, and ratified on February 26, 1860. The Spanish Queen Isabella II confirmed the treaties. However, the governor of Buenos Aires Carlos Tejedor rejected Alberti's negotiations. He also met Roses, who was living in Southampton since he left power. The Argentine Confederation and the state of Buenos Aires were reunified in 1861, which ceased Alberti's work as ambassador. He opposed the War of the Triple Alliance, and began a controversy about it with President Bartolomé Mitre. In this time he began to write El Crimen de la Guerra, a book that he did not finish and was published posthumously in 1895. <laughs> Late life Alberti returned to Argentina in 1879, after more than 40 years living abroad. He had been appointed representative for Tucumán, but was rejected during the rebellion of Carlos Tejedor against Julio Argentino Roca. The civil war ended in 1880 with the federalization of Buenos Aires. Alberti had received a number of recognitions by this time. The village of Alberti in Santa Fe Province which was later incorporated to Rosario as Barrio Alberti was named after him, and President Roca sent a bill to Congress to have all of Alberti's works published. The newspaper La Nación, established by Mitre, criticized those recognitions. Alberti was sent to Europe, he had a stroke during the journey. His health rapidly declined, and he died near Paris on June 19, 1884. <inaudible> <inaudible> Legacy His political as well as his economic projects are supported by contemporary Argentine libertarian economists such as Javier Millet, José Luis Espert, Roberto Kashinovsky among others. <laughs> <laughs> Selected bibliography El Espíritu de la Música 1832 Memoria Descriptiva Sobra Tucumán 1834 Fragmento preliminar al Estudio del Derecho 1837 Sobre la conveniencia de un Congreso General Americano 1844 Bases y puntos de partida para la Organización Política de la República Argentina 1852 Elementos de Derecho Público Provincial Argentino 1852